Hello, hello, my name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Awakening. In the last episode, we discovered that Kristoff's wife, Aura, had made her way to Vigil's Keep looking for her husband. Justice has asked us to track her down, and of course we will be doing that. However, I think today I mainly want to kind of prep for endgame so i'm gonna give out all of my gifts sort out everyone's equipment because after that we really don't have too many quests left we only have you know ogren and justice justices companion quest we have trade must flow we have the main plot and we also have a quest i missed in um notwood hills so I am going to go and take care of that at some point. Not entirely sure when. Um, okay, first things first. Gifts. <laughs> we have plenty of gifts for uh, justice. So uh, take this ring. Also, very quickly, you're at plus 21. 99. Pardon? 88 love oh no no madam no artin one artin does not swing that way two she is happily with her boyfriend alistair i i imagine artin has missed alistair dearly she cannot wait to see him again um she certainly does not want a uh murder hobo elf pining after her or a besotted mage no thank you 65 95 okay i i hope this will be all right i hope what is that sound such beautiful singing the stone within this ring is it lyrium am i allowed to keep this is it to be mine that's the idea of a gift if you don't like it you can give it back it's singing i don't hear anything Art Artin, you should hear it because you are a dwarf. I I would like it noted. I do not think this is evidence that Artin has lost her stone sense. I think this is the writers forgetting that dwarves are a thing. Um Then again, it's it's the mining cast who have particularly strong stone sense, so maybe maybe Artin wouldn't be able to hear it, just like her brothers rest in peace one of those her father probably wouldn't have been able to hear it and um, yeah i'm pretty sure it's only the mining cast and those kind of odd anomalies that have really strong so stone senses it's not a universal thing hmm yeah we're not gonna go for number three and i He's not acting like he dislikes it. He called it beautiful singing. He wouldn't have been like, such beautiful singing. Take it away from me. I hate it. That's the idea of a gift. When mortals dream of lyrium in the Fade, it is not like this. The song saddens me, but it is breathtaking. Of all the things I have seen in this world, this is the most precious. I shall keep it at my side as a reminder that even in misfortune, good can be found. Oh my god! Pardon? Jesus! What the- a justice! Thank, thank you for all that approval! That tasty, tasty approval! Um, let's see, what else do we have to give you? You know what, let me just open up my notes. There we are. Yeah, gifts for justice. He wants the uh, elven prayers for the dead. I do not know quite how to thank you. Christoph's locket. You have my sincere thanks. Christoph's mementos. You have my sincere thanks. Lyrium, the voice of the maker. You have my sincere thanks. The Lyrium ring and verses of dreams. You have my sincere thanks. Okay, plus 78. We also have his companion conquest. Companion conquest? No, companion quest. I can speak English, I swear I can. 
And we've also got any dialogue. Hopefully that'll bring him up to 100. Okay, who is next? Nathaniel. Where are my notes for you? Um, yeah, you do want the locksmith's tools. This is nice. And everything else, I believe, we have given him. Yeah, so he's he's at plus 100. Good job, buddy. Valana. Blank journal, we already gave her. Greenstone. She wants the ornate silver bowl. Yeah, that did. It has graceful representation of Elven Halla. Thank you. This is a lovely gift. There we go. I, I don't like the fact that you love me. That I just want to make sure. To see Nathaniel feels perfectly friendly. Why? Valana and Anders, no, this is... This is not what you should be doing, guys. This, this was not how it was meant to go. Anders, I believe I've given you all of your gifts. If I can find your your gift list. Yeah, we've we've given him everything, so that is you done. Ogren. I believe he wants the horse. Yep. All he wants is a, a toy horse for a child. Yep. What's this? A baby's plaything? You wanted a pony? I thought you'd like it. It's a rocking horse. A pony. Don't want it? I'll keep it then. Oh, um... I... Th I think that Artin would have gotten him the pony so he could send it to his kid. But thinking about it, she's oh yeah, he did ask for a pony. All those months ago, and I think that one, she is hoping that he will send it to his kid. But Ogryn has Ogryn has been not exactly a thorn in Artin's side, but he has consistently harassed women. He, you know went against her orders to help out the Blight Orphans. He has been making trouble. And I think she's... I think she's kind of sassing him a little bit right now. You wanted a pony. Wait, you paid attention to what I said when I was drunk? Oh, that's special. Ooh, hey, wanna buy a bridge? Too bad it's not a real pony, huh? <laughs> ah, just as well. The real one's poop. This is... <laughs> you make me laugh, Commander. <laughs> Thanks. No worries, but whoa, plus 17. Oh my goodness. Where are you at? Plus 82, okay. And our last gift, the toy chariot. That will be for Sigrun, I believe. Let me just check. Yep, Sigrun wants the chariot. Oh, how nice. Okay, so I, I do have the maps, which should have gone to Loghain, but obviously we never recruited Loghain. So if there's... If there's anyone who's, like, close to 100, I can maybe give them these and I might get plus one or whatever. Hopefully. Hopefully that'll work out. Okay, let me get back to my timer. There we go. Um, let's see. Who do I want to speak to? Let's, uh, let's start off with our newest companion, Justice. This world is nothing like I thought it would be. The demons lust to cross the veil, but the rest of us scoff. We pity mortals, we do not envy them. And thanks for that, we appreciate it. You barely know anything about it. Perhaps you should help us instead. They're, they're spirits, what are they? They're stuck in the Fade, what are they gonna do there? Um. Ooh. The demons lust to cross the veil, but the rest of us scoff. We pity mortals, we do not envy them. 
I don't want to go for number three. That does not sound like an Artin thing to say. Number one sounds very sarcastic. You know, oh, and thanks for that. We appreciate it. You know, saying, oh, like, we pity mortals. We do not envy them. Because our lives must seem very dull and immutable in comparison. The Fade can create so many wondrous, wonderful things. So to look at the real world, it must seem very grey and drab. You know, the mortals have such short lifespans. Why wouldn't you pity them? Hmm. So I, I think I'm going to go for number two here. Because I can't see Artin being sarcastic. And I can't see her saying, oh, well, why don't you help us instead? Artin doesn't want any help from fade spirits. That's that's a strong no. Why why would she? What can they do? You barely know anything about it. Indeed. You are correct. We are wrong about this world. There is beauty here, and the mortals, they are worth saving. You helped me in the fade and have proven yourself since. It is not right to judge all mortals the same. Are you saying we're friends now? So glad you approve. Should I care what you think? I'm not like the most. Um, Artin... Artin does acknowledge that she is far more competent than most people. However, I don't... She doesn't necessarily mean that in a boastful or an arrogant way. It's just... It, it could come across as that, but to her, it's, it is fact. She is stating a fact. She is a far more competent fighter than most other women in Orzammar who are in a similar position to her. You know, most women in Orzammar, they get kind of brought up to be like, oh, I'll just lie on a couch and pump out babies and that, that'll that be my life. Compared to Artin, who was, you know, like you will be raised to fight. You will be raised to speak well to people. You will be able to do X, Y, and Z. You will be able to command and lead. So, on one hand, Artin can agree with number four. I'm not like most. I am more accomplished than most people. I don't think she'd say that, though. Here's my thing. I want to go with number one, but we met this guy less than a week ago. In the grand scheme of things, we have known this guy for maybe a week. And that feels weird to me. Artin would care what he thinks. She does want to become friends with um, her companions. Maybe, maybe considering that Justice is a spirit, maybe time passes differently for him. And I don't mean that like, you know, like she's thinking, oh, maybe it's been a month for Justice compared to a week for me. I don't mean in that sense. I mean that a week to, to us might seem like a month to him. It is all the same passage of time. It has just been a week but it might seem longer to him because he's used to fade time, basically. Arden, Arden has nothing against Justice. Justice has not done anything scummy. He has proven to be compassionate and empathetic. How he reacted to Aura, especially, I think in her eyes, spoke very well of him. You know, how distressed he was that he was causing this woman upset by oh what's the word I'm looking for possessing the body of her husband I think Artin thought you know like oh I'm, I'm glad he's upset I'm glad he's not being like well it's my body now fuck you and fuck your husband um yeah I'm, I'm gonna go for number one I think Artin is coming at this from a place of I haven't seen anything dodgy about this guy. I've only known him for about a week. I haven't seen any behaviour that I find disturbing or untrustworthy. And perhaps 
time means something different for for him considering that he's a spirit. Are you saying we're friends now? A friend? That is an interesting concept. I do not know how to respond to that. I wish to thank you again for the ring. The Song of Delirium is yet more of this world's value. Would that I could bring that music back to the Fade, for the other spirits to hear. Huh, alas. Oh shit, minus two. I'm gonna assume that was because of our first comment rather than anything else because we were like, oh, but you don't know anything about this world. That's, that's what I'm assuming at least. This world of yours is far more colorful than I imagined and more noisy. Okay. Oh, Christoph's chest. Very well. This is a chest of belongings once owned by the man whose body I now inhabit. His essence lingers upon these objects like dust. Leave those alone. They're not yours. That's a little creepy, isn't it? You can feel it. Um. They aren't his, but he can clearly... He can clearly sense Kristoff's memories, and I think the feeling that Artin is getting, it's not so much that he wants to step into Kristoff's life, it's that he wants to learn about the man that he is inhabiting. I think Artin is... Artin believes justice is coming at this from a place of respect. Kind of like stepping into the role of, um, you know, the general of an army. And you trying to learn about who the last general was and how they led and all of that kind of thing. You're not trying to become that last general. You're just trying to find out about them. And I think that's where Artin thinks justice is coming from. You can feel it. I can even hear it whispering his name into the ether. In the Fade, nothing outlives the spirit that created it. Here, everything does. This world has... Fingerprints on top of fingerprints. Witness to beings long dead. Can you tell anything from these fingerprints? When you die, there's nothing left at all. Isn't that a little distracting? Hmm. Ooh. I'm drawn to one or two. Yeah, I think that, I mean, for dwarves, when a dwarf dies, they're still recorded in the memories. There is still so much of a dwarf left once they pass away. I mean, you could go and visit their grave if you wanted to. When you die, there's nothing left at all. In the Fade, a spirit returns to the source. But here, I have no idea what happens if I die here. The man who owned these things was a great warden like yourself, yes? We intend to avenge him? You want vengeance? No! Don't! Don't say that word! Don't say that word around justice, please! The darkspawn who killed him is dead. Yes, that's my hope. Don't worry about that. Um. Here's the thing. The darkspawn that killed him, the first, is dead. Justice is wearing his armour. However, the first killed Kristoff because the mother ordered him to. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Me as the player, I'm like, discourage this line of thought. Discourage it. Awful things will happen. But Artin... Artin has no idea about this. So she's gonna say number three. Yes, that's my hope. Good. These darkspawn are a cancer within the heart of this world. <sighs> but there is nothing that can be done just yet, is there? A world so full of beauty that beauty goes overlooked. I must see it with different eyes. Plus six. This place seems very large. Is there no end to it? Oh, there, there is. Eventually, it just takes a while. Okay, uh, that is it for justice. Anders. No rest for the wicked, him. Eh? No, none at all. Nathaniel. I don't think we should dally here. Still uncomfortable in his own home. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm finally gonna be able to sort out all of my inventory. You know what? Madam. May I be of service? Do you have any runes for sale? Certainly. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna start off here because I don't need any of these. <laughs> None of these, thank you. Goodbye. Oh, I can probably... I can probably sell off all of these gems. I don't think I need these for any quests. Um, that can go. Mm. The helmets can go. And that. Goodbye. Goodbye. And the mace can go. I don't use maces. Okay, that's that's good enough for right now. Have an Ogren buddy. Ah, sod it. Okay, hello to you two. What's the matter? What are you whining about looking for attention again? Artin, as, as frustrated as she gets with Ogryn, she's... She is his commander. She has to maintain a dignified air. What's the matter? Nothing. Stub my toe. Just one of those days. Actually, it's been one of those weeks. <sighs> Would you like to talk... I know what you mean. I'm under the impression you've had one of those years. Um, we are his commanding officer. He he should feel free to be able to talk to us. Would you like to talk? This isn't going to make you think any less of me, is it? Ugh. Nah, who cares? I've just been thinking about Felsi and the Nugget. Didn't do right by them, did I? Um... <laughs> I'm so, my gut was just, uh, Artin thinks very little of you, Ogryn. There is not much you could say to make her opinion of you any lower than it already is. Oh, um. Hmm. I've just been thinking about Felsi and the Nugget. Didn't do right by them, did I? Not one bit. You're not a family man, Ogryn. Don't apologize for it if you have to ask. Oh dear. My gut says I should go for number one. Because here's the thing, Artin... As I said, Artin did not approve of Ogryn becoming a Grey Warden. But she couldn't exactly turn him down because she was chronically understaffed and all of the Grey Wardens she had just been given had been murdered by Darkspawn. Um, I don't want to go with number three because I don't feel like that is an artin thing to say. And I, I just can't see Artin saying oh don't you don't need to apologize for deserting your family Be oh my my worry is that if I just kind of yell at him then he might kind of go oh well I don't want to talk to you anymore and I'm like no that's not because I think Art Artin wants to get Ogryn involved with his family in some way. In some way, he needs to be involved in his child's life. Not, not for Ogryn's sake, but for the kids. I think that... <sighs> Oh, my, th my thinking is, which is worse, 
to have no dad at all or to have a dad who's kind of shitty who's drunk and arguing with Felsi and all of that is which is better which is worse I don't know me as the player I don't know which is worse but I Artin is very family focused and she loved her father and she cannot imagine her life without him I, I this kid has the right to know who their dad is if they grow up and come to the the conclusion that Ogren was a shitty person, then that's that's fair on them, but I I can't go with two or three. I can't. Not one bit. That's what I like about you. You're honest. Like a sock to the gut. I think Felsi knew. Even if she never acknowledged it to herself, she knew I could never settle down again. I did once, and, well, you know... It's done now. You can't go back. I don't think you tried hard enough. She'll survive. Um, oh dear. Oh. I'm... I'm disinclined to go with number two. Because we weren't there. We can't say how hard he did or didn't try. We didn't see. We didn't see what he did. We've we've heard what he did. Hmm. I think Ogren he holds too much onto the past. He holds far too much onto Bronca and I I don't think he can let go of his first marriage I think it is impossible for him to let go of that feeling of being a failure and I I think he feels like he's the reason why his marriage failed and it isn't his marriage failed because his wife was a lesbian who promptly realized you know what I don't like pretending to be straight. Amma just go off into the deep roads and become obsessed with this thing and Amma leave my husband here. Fuck this. And Ogren can't let go of the fact that he feels like it is his failure. It isn't. That is not on Ogren and he needs to let that go and he can't. And because of that, he is doomed to keep failing. If you become so, not exactly reveling in your own misery, but it's the idea of like, if you are constantly thinking, I'll never be happy, then you will never be happy. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If Ogryn goes into every relationship thinking, this'll never work out, I'll fuck it up, then it will never work out and you will fuck it up. Um... Still, I... Hmm. I'm really not too sure. I, I think I'm going to go with number three. I think. Because we... We can't say whether he tried hard enough. He might have. We don't know. We were not there. Joining the Grey Wardens right after... You know, your, your wife has given birth and abandoning your child, that is a shitty thing to do. But the six month gap where he was living with her and all of that, he might have tried really hard, we can't say. And maybe he could go back. Maybe if he apologised to Felsi, then she might take him back. Artin doesn't know, but I think what she does know is that Felsi is tough. Felsi is a tough lady. She will do what she needs to do. She will survive. She'll survive. People survive losing a leg, Warden. Doesn't mean they're not damaged. <sighs> She'll be alright in the end, though. But the Nugget... Uh, that's got me all torn up inside, Commander. Little one won't understand. 
The baby won't remember you enough to miss you. Should have thought about that before you joined. There's no reason you can't be a part of your child's life. Yes! Number three. There's no reason you can't be a part of your child's life. Maybe I could visit once in a while, write some letters. That's the least I could do as a father. And hey, <laughs> the little one will grow up thinking daddy's a great hero. I'll even vouch for you. Hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Whatever helps you move on. Um. Oh, God. I... 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 Um. Oh, oh, there goes my timer. Um. Here's my thinking. Uh. Um. He is kind of a hero. He's fighting Darkspawn. He's being an absolute dick whilst he's doing it, but he, he is fighting. And he's doing what we tell him and all of that. I can't see her saying number two. And I, d I don't like number three. That's my main thing. Whatever helps you move on. Like... You don't just move on from having a kid. You don't write to it for a couple of years and then dump it. So I don't... I don't like how that sounds. I don't like the implications of that. Which me, which does leave me with number one. I... Artin could be nice about Ogryn for the sake of his kid. If the kid wanted to write to her... She could write some diplomatic bullshit where she'd like, yeah, your dad helped me out with some fights and all of that. Great soldier. Not going to mention any of the things that he said around women. I, I, I guess I have to go with number one because I don't like the implications of number three. And number two sounds too sarcastic for Artin. You know what I mean? I'll even vouch for you. Oh, you. Get going before I get misty-eyed. Go on. And, yep, that was... Ogryn has considered his relationship with Felsi and his child. He's realized he's really not a family man after all. Oh! I... I need to read this codex entry. So I am out of time. I'm going to read this one codex entry to make sure that he is writing to his kid. Now let's go introduce some darkspawn asses to my foot. Only polite thing to do. Ogryn was once married to Branka, Orzammar's sole living paragon, but she left him to search for the Anvil of the Void. Ogryn took to drink, then accidentally killed another warrior in a drunken proving match. For this mistake, Ogryn was stripped of his house and barred from bearing weapons. For a warrior, worse than exile. When the Grey Wardens called for aid from the dwarves, Orzammar's throne was contested, and only a paragon could settle the dispute. Ogryn, hoping to find his wife, offered to guide the party through the deep roads. But Branca's obsession with the Anvil of the Void had driven her mad. The Wardens helped choose a new king, and Ogryn, having lost everything, left with the Wardens. When the blight was ended, Ogryn settled down with his old flame, Felsi, and had a child. But domestic bliss did not last, and so Ogryn travelled to Vigil's Keep in hope, of in hope of becoming a warden himself. Ogryn survived the joining. His extensive experience drinking bitter swill likely helped. Felsi arrived at Vigil's Keep demanding to see Ogryn. Their conversation ended poorly. Ogryn confided in the warden commander. He admitted to feeling guilty over abandoning his child and resolved to be a better father. Thank you. Oh, thank goodness. Ogryn's passion for strong drink hasn't waned. Oh, I... Yes, Ogryn, write to your child. Please, please do that, Ogryn, buddy. I, I, he deserves to have his dad. Also, something I would like it noted, but they never really bring up. Ogryn's kid is named after the warden. So Ogryn's kid is named Artin in this. So I, I don't know if the Nugget is a girl. Don't know if they're a boy. It's never really said. But there is a little um, Artin uh, Coldrat, I think. Was it Coldrat? 
whatever Ogren's surname is. Okay, so I am out of time for this episode. In the next one, we will continue doing companion things. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.